17th. It is 7.32 in the morning, and I have no idea why I'm making this sound like it is a hostage video. Um, Friday night, we got the news that Jar Jar was coming to the Hollow Tables. We don't have any more news than that, right? All we really know is that he's a legendary event, um, and that there are four marquees that are going to be associated with this event. Uh, we know that the raid is going to come out sometime around July, um, but we don't know when Jar Jar related stuff is going to start releasing. It could be this week with the title update or whatever this big update is. Uh, it could be next week. It doesn't matter. What does matter is that I really want to get him day one. A bunch of other people want to get him day one. And um, nobody really knows what to expect in terms of crystal cost because I think a lot of the people that are doing this or, or trying to do this are people that don't generally wail on things. So I actually spent my weekend um, compiling data on the last, like, I don't know, 9, 10, 11 I honestly didn't count events and tracking them all the way back to Lord Vader to kind of get some historic data and to get some pattern data to give us kind of an idea um, of what we might see. Uh, you're going to see some dates. Ignore the dates. The dates aren't what's important. What, what is important is the amount of time in between each date. And I've compiled three scenarios, a worst case scenario, a uh, best case scenario and something kind of in the middle. So bear with me for a minute. We're going to take this back to, I think it was last year. Great movie, Missing. This kind of reminds me of that. I'm going to bring myself down somewhere there. Perfect. Ooh, look at that. All right, so here's what I have. Here's some historic data on um, all of the uh, events that we've had going back all the way to Lord Vader. And I've sectioned them off into three sections. Uh, three marquee events, four marquee events, and five marquee events, okay, all the way back. Um, you'll notice that Lord Vader is kind of isolated as red, and everything else is based off of how many marquees. And the reason that I did that is that the marquees for Vader came out uh, oops, well in advance of, of Lord Vader coming out, right? And you can kind of see that there was 126 days in between his last uh, marquee and him being released to the game. So it's kind of an outlier, and I, um, I, I took that into account when I was tracking the data, and you'll see all these lovely averages here down on the screen. And basically, just to give you an idea of what's going on, is I tracked the release date, I tracked how many days between the release date and the release date of the next character, or the release date of the actual event, um, but also how many days might have passed in between the character um, being released to the game, going to shipments, um, and then going to free-to-play farm. Okay, and I used all of this data to kind of give me some pattern numbers. Uh, obviously, this is just an idea. You know, CG kind of makes shit up as they go along sometimes, um, and you can see that there really isn't any reliable numbers, right? We go... 28 days in between up here, 21 days down here, 14 for Seer Junda. Um, that's also kind of why I tracked it in between the types of events. Neither here nor there, because this is all speculative, and, and I'm not really somebody who likes doing speculative stuff, um, but it is kind of the idea of Math Club to find patterns wherever we can find patterns, just to, to see if we can... Um, get a general idea of what to expect. So, what we have here is the worst case scenario. And again, we're gonna ignore the actual dates because the actual dates themselves aren't important. In the worst case scenario event, we took completely straight patterns um, of the middle grounds in terms of tracking the averages of when uh, characters released or when they went to shipments, right? Uh, and what we'll see here in the worst case scenario is that we basically get no days of free-to-play farmable for any of the characters, uh, which years ago wasn't usually the case, but that seems to be more the case going forward over the last um, year or two. So in this scenario, we are getting the exact averages of everything. And the one thing that we are ignoring in all of these scenarios is a cantina farm. You know, a cantina farm can make one of these farms much, much, much cheaper. But the problem is we don't really know whether that's going to happen until it is free to play um, farmable. Uh, in the worst case scenario, it doesn't actually matter because there's there's zero days of free to play involved in this. Okay, So 
in a worst case scenario event, right, where we follow the straight averages, Jar Jar Binks, again, ignoring the dates, um, we start on 215 with a mar marquee release, Jar Jar Binks come out, comes out in April 11th, and we are looking at one character that actually gets some degree of, of solid shipment farming um, and a total cost of 148,000 crystals or almost $900 worth of value, okay? We can subtract the value of whatever we have in our coffers as, as a player from that, but it just gives you an idea. I'm somebody that hoards a lot. I've got 62,000 crystals on my account right now just from natural playing uh, that barely breaks a dent in this in this number. I would still need 80,000 or so crystals in order to um, in order to do well. Okay. In a middle ground scenario, all right, we here basically I looked at the patterns, right, in this historic data, and I kind of really focused on the marquee patterns, and I gave us a little bit more leeway in between the jumps between different segments. Uh, you know, so the the first scenario was just looking at the data. The second scenario was trying to interpret the data a little bit more and with a little bit of guesswork, right? So here, our first marquee releases on 215. Jar Jar Binks releases in the beginning of May, okay? May 2nd. It gives us a little bit of free-to-play farmability. It gives us a little bit more room for a shipment farm um, still two characters aren't going to see any free-to-play farmability, right? And when we look at this, we're looking at about $730 worth of value, right? So 120,000 crystals. So again, in this scenario, I've got about 62,000 crystals in my account right now. Um, I could half this, right? And I would need another 350 or so dollars in value in order to, um, in order to get Jar Jar day one. Um, and then we have our best case scenario. And the base, best case scenario is a little different because obviously I want to get Jar Jar on day one. I know a lot of people want to get Jar Jar on day one. But the best case scenario just takes this middle ground scenario and it gives us the leeway of the event itself, right? So other than Bo-Katan, Bo-Katan was a three-day event. Uh, generally, these events are seven days. And it's important to note that Bo-Katan is actually an epic confrontation. We haven't had an epic confrontation since um, General Anakin Skywalker. Yeah, since General Anakin Skywalker released. Um, so it's been a very long time, but we have had journey events and we have had le legendary events in that time frame, and we've had legacy events and they are typically seven days. So in this scenario, we're giving ourselves that seven day leeway um, and we're kind of saying, okay, hey, we're not gonna get Jar Jar day one but we will get him before his event ends. Um, same scenario, um, slightly, slightly, slightly different numbers, I think. Let's see, 521, what did we do here? 14, all right, so I gave it just, just a little bit more leeway here based on some of the data in the, in the historic um, numbers. Um, but I also gave it that plus seven um, for the actual event. And we're looking at about $553 in cost, okay? So 91,000 crystals um, in value. So again, for myself, I've got about 62,000 crystals. Um, that means that I need about 30,000 more in order, to, uh, in order to get Jar Jar. Uh, the other thing to consider here is the gearing, right? So I've kind of been looking at where I can use less of my crystals on my account uh, to hoard more of them in anticipation of Jar Jar. Again, uh, the raid is not till July, so it, it's very possible that we don't actually see a marquee release until you know mid-March um, to kind of line up with that raid. We don't know, we have no idea. But what I'm realizing is that things like Cantina and, and Signal Data are somewhere that I can't shore up my account, right? So I look at um, sheet number three here. Um, and sheet number three is based off the assumption that just like the Bo-Katan event, you're going to need R7 on all of the marquees. It's very possible that like the Cal event, it might be G12. 
Um, it's very possible that like the Star Killer and the Afro event that you're gonna need art five, so it might be a little bit less. Um, but we're looking at about 477 of the first signal data of the gray, blue, whatever it is, uh, about 684 of the green signal data, uh, and 730 of the blue signal data. Why so much for Jar Jar? Because if you're gonna wail on him, you might as well get him to R9 right away. Okay. You'll also see here that there is some extra math um, that I just kind of threw in that we use, um, oop, throwing up pages, um, some of the math that we use for, for some of the things in the, the different scenarios, right? So that's just some extra numbers so that I could have cells call other cells. Um, but basically about 1900 signal data total, which is about two months of straight farming with uh, three refreshes on Cantina a day and using all of your energy. The one thing to consider here though is again, um, between the time of that first marquee all the way to when Jar Jar releases, we're looking at a two to three month time frame, possibly four months. And that's going to mean between 14 and 28 assault battles. And if you're doing CT2 and CT3, it's going to bring down your actual need. If you have signal data right now, it's going to bring down, you know, your actual need. Um, if you're using or you're getting signal data from Conquest, it's going to bring down your actual need. But it does just kind of give us an idea of what to expect in terms of farmability. So once again, this is all pattern data um, and it's only really designed to give players an idea of what to expect. And we're looking to expect a, a spending of somewhere between 91,000 crystals and 148,000 or 150,000 crystals. Once again, the problem is that, um, you know, I, I have Boston Ass as the first marquee because I kind of just went in order um, but I'm, I'm assuming that it'll probably be like one of the named guys, so something like Tarfuls, and then one of the, um, the expendable guys, and, and probably Boss Nass at the end, but that's irrelevant. Um, one of the problems is, because we won't know going in how accessible this event will be, um, you know, going into that first marquee, you're not going to know if you're going to need to shipment farm things. Um, you're not going to know if you're going to have to, um, you know, hold off on the event. Um, we're going to have to wing it as we go along. And the first one, the first character, it won't be so bad because typically that one, no matter what, is going to be shipment farmable in the end. Uh, but the other three, we, it's, it's going to be, you know, a, a, a guessing game. And again, worst case scenario, it's not going to matter, but in this middle ground or this best case scenario, if the first one is a cantina farm, um, it's gonna change the data just a little bit um, or whichever one they choose to do as the cantina farm. But that is typically either the first or the last you know, in a set. Um, the other thing that this does not account for is energy cost. Okay, so if you're doing like three refreshes a day on energy, that's an extra 50 to 150 crystals a day that I, I don't account for because we don't know what to expect in terms of like, are you gonna need um, uh, eight energy nodes? Are you gonna need 20 energy nodes? How many are you gonna be able to farm at once? Is one of them gonna be fleet so that it won't matter? We just, we, we don't know, okay? This is basically the speculative math club we're gonna see what we get. We're gonna see what happens from here. Um, but for those of you that have been asking and trying to get an idea of what to do, this is what we're looking at. If you're a high-end player, you're a Kyber player, you know, you're probably looking at earning about a thousand crystals per day over um, a straight average. So, you know, 30,000 crystals a month that you're earning if you're spending literally zero right now. But if, um, if you're someone that wants to stay on top of things, you're gonna have a lot of trouble doing that, right? It's it's not gonna be easy for you to say, okay, I'm just gonna get rid of all of my spending and hold all of it for Jar Jar because you're gonna fall behind, um, especially for things like Cantina and especially, you know, like Chirotech. Um, I've got about a thousand of each Chirotech right now, but we're looking at four marquees. 
personally, I've actually started slow farming my Bo-Katan, um, my Bo-Katan requirements and, and dropping all energy refreshes on them because she's a luxury that I don't give a shit about anymore. Um, but that Cairo Tech cost is going to be something that we take into consideration as well uh, because you know, you're going to want to continue in this interim doing your normal refreshes to get those a little bit on the cheaper end than having to buy them later on. So thank you for joining me for uh, Math Club. Um, hopefully you find this helpful. Um, hopefully it inspires you to go for Jar Jar because as much as he's a crazy piece of shit, um, you know, he is our crazy piece of shit. Uh, I know for myself, uh, my plan is to get him day one, um, but we're going to see if that works out. Uh, best of luck to everybody on the holo tables.